come out here the day after the previous uh, Kernza recap just because there were some things I left out and uh, for my own records my own uh, memory I want to make a note of what what happened uh, today what we did I didn't show a sample of the Kernza grain uh, yesterday but this is what we've got after it's gone through the combine again now uh, there's still there's there's unthreshed kernza in there, but there's threshed kernza in there. And by volume, we have probably 60 to 70 percent of what we had before. So that grain cart up there was two-thirds full, and this was about as full as it is now, a little less, or a little more full than it was. So we ran all this through on different settings, primarily to get it to flow, and it'll flow now. Before, there was some bridging, a little bit like silage. Um, the settings, I'll go over them again, but basically the uh, concave was at two, two millimeters. This is a Deere 9560 STS combine rotary. Uh, the, the rotor speed was, I believe, 900. The fan, I had the slow fan speed uh, pulley. I bought that and they had that installed on there. So my fan speed is 300 CFM. Um... Then the chaffer, the top one, I close that down to about six, six or seven, and the bottom one is at one. And um, the material that was blown out the back yesterday, I looked at it closer, and there really wasn't a whole lot of threshed grain in there. There was mostly pods that were, cr you know, cracked open. So I, I'm happy with that. Well, I'm going to have to live with that because really the bottom line is this stuff has to flow through a six inch auger so that the seed cleaner can do his job. Um, we ran into problems even with that here. This auger plugged up when we were unloading and dumping it into the feeder house of the combine. I blocked off the feeder house of the combine if you look back at that previous video and you'll see that and I put a, like a panel panel hopper on it to um, to uh, receive the grain because we ended up dumping straight from that grain cart into that hopper so the hopper ended up being beneficial These are, this is the equipment we've got I mean I'm not set up to grow this stuff so what's going to happen now I'll put uh, one of those uh, B&M screw and aerators in this uh, seed tender, this gravity box and supposedly there's a buyer for this stuff next year, now it's uh, September 11th 2024 supposedly in 2025 there's a buyer at this point i'm not interested in it's just too much work and there's too many questions about this and it, it basically it takes away too much energy i have to spend on this when i've got it's five percent of my acres and it's taken up you know 30 percent of my time or something like that it seems like and there's really no money in it i'm losing money on it so I'm going to let somebody else do this. Maybe I'll revisit in a few years. But this will sit in the shed with that aerator on it. And then I can unload it using this uh, brush auger, 6-inch brush auger, into one-ton grain totes. And that's how it's going to get shipped to the seed cleaner. And hopefully he can do something with it. Um, and there's a usable product from this. But like I said, this was uh, year three of an experiment that I wouldn't say it's a complete failure, but it wasn't a success either. So anybody who watches this, um, I'm making these videos for myself as well as for other people who are growing this stuff because I couldn't find anything like this online that would talk about some of the realities of, uh, of growing this in a you know organic uh, production system. So if you've got any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, my email is the, on the page and, uh, or just leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Well, the beans are a couple weeks away. Looks like there's weeds out there, but my beans look really good. That was this year's hit, so far anyway. Fingers crossed.